I'm Jerry McKee and welcome to Primetime with Jerry McKee and we got a great special guest, Billy Jo Jones. She's Nashville's Tennessee country music newcomer that's just taking the world by, by storm. Uh, she got a, a wonderful uh, song out there. I think it was produced by Bob Frank Distribution, BFD. Some girls don't cry. We're going to talk to her a little bit about that. And she's climbing multiple charts and 89,000 plus monthly listeners on Spotify and uh, and growing. That is fantastic. And uh, let me get her picture up here instead of mine. And uh, here we go. Billy Joe Jones, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing fantastic. I'm glad uh, you, I got to talk to you. you. You, My understanding, you're down in Texas. I sure am. I'm in Texas. I'm I'm back and forth between here and Nashville, but I'm uh, I'm in Texas right now. Now, uh, I I noticed that uh, in Texas, people don't understand that Texas is Southern too. You know, it's a uh, it's uh, a lot of the with the history I studied and uh, talk about South Carolina. Uh -huh. I had I had uh, 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 Danny uh, on with uh, with William Golden just uh, earlier today, and she's from Australia. And uh, now her, oh, ac wow. her accent's a little bit different, but I did have her. I says, now I want, uh -huh. you, I want you to do a southern, a uh, uh, little southern talk for me. <laughs> she says, y'all got some <laughs> sweet tea? <laughs> it's funny. But you, 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 funny. you've got that old school, old soul, country, country music sound that, that's really missing from the country now. I, I like uh, some of the uh, progressive country, but it's not like some of the some of the old school things. And you've got a lot of soul mm -hmm. in yours too. Yeah. And uh, yes, sir, for sure. Now you were born in Dallas, Texas, correct? I was born in Dallas. I, I was raised in a, a small town called Emory, Texas, um, is where I was raised. So I, I grew up in a really small town. Um, but yeah, 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 born in Dallas. Well, I, I lived in Dallas for about a year. Um, many years ago, oh, cool. many years ago, I come out of Louisiana to there, and I was born in Virginia, so it kind of spread me around a little bit. Uh, but but I, I actually yeah. like Dallas, Texas. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a fun city. Now, uh, how did you, and how old were you when you were just starting to sing and, 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 and knowing that uh, you know, this is just uh, getting your start. I mean, uh, not not in the music business, but you start singing because everybody has a starting point. Uh, even William Golden, at eighty years old, had a starting point where, mm -hmm. whether he's little with his family, would like it. Tell me, tell me your story. Uh, I know a little bit about it because I've been snooping around on your page <laughs> and yeah. seeing some of it. Uh, so tell me a little bit about how you started on this track of just wanting to sing. Yeah, so I was actually uh, raised by my grandparents, um, so I was raised on what I call the oldies but goodies. So I grew up listening to Loretta Lynn, Tammy Wynette, Patsy Cline, Ray Price, George Jones, um, all the greats. And I was, you know, three and four years old sitting in the living room, and I, I would make my grandparents, you know, call me in there. They had to say, here comes Billy Joe, and I'd walk in there, and I would sing um you know back then it was you know, the dixie chicks were a hot thing and billy ray cyrus and shania twain and uh so i i would sit there and and you know 
sing songs in front of them. And I just knew since I was a little girl that I wanted to be a singer. And uh, that went on, you know, for a while. And the first stage I ever stepped on was actually my local church um, when I was nine years old. Um, so oh. I sang at several churches and, and festivals and revivals. And um, there's little things called Opry's in Texas. So kind of like the Grand Ole Opry, but, you know, much, much, much smaller um, versions of the Grand Ole Opry. Uh, and I grew up playing on those with they put a country western band up there and that band would learn you know 30 35 songs of different artists you know that would come up there and sing and um so I went from that to I got to open for Ray Price when I was 18 years old oh wow um and then it kind of went from there and I've opened for the Oak Ridge Boys and um you know now Stoney LaRue and and Pat Green and Dina Carter and Diamond Rio and uh, just so many so many great artists I've been able to share the stage with so um, it's definitely been a, well, a, a, a really fun time growing well, up in country well, I, music. So. I know that the biggest stage that you had when you were growing up, uh, I was reading a little bit about being four and five years old, performing for your, your grandparents, uh -huh. uh, that that probably was, to them, was the, was, was the biggest blessing of watching you perform at that age. Oh, yes. yes. And, uh, it sure was. And, and, and they were your best fans. And oh yeah, they still are. They are. They're 89 and 86 years old, oh, wow. and they still come with me to a lot of my shows. Um, so they're actually coming to my show this Saturday that I have. But they uh, they try to still go as much as they can. So they're they're still my biggest fans and, and biggest supporters. Now, who are some of your um, biggest idols that you look at uh, performing today that that you kind of follow and watch their footsteps into the singing the music career uh that you kind of idle yourself yeah uh, i mean definitely loretta lynn was was the queen of country music in my eyes when i was a little girl and and she still is and i still you know if i play a full band show or even acoustic show um, you're going to hear some of my favorite cover songs and those usually by loretta lynn reba mcintyre patsy klein um, I'll throw some Waylon Jennings in there. Um, so there's the, I, I love the tr traditional country music and that's kind of what I'm trying to bring back is, is mixing the traditional country with the modern country. Um, but definitely trying to stay more traditional if I can. So, well, a little story about Loretta Lynn. I kissed Loretta Lynn right in the mouth, um, uh, back in the eighties, uh, mm -hmm. interviewing her on her bus. And, uh, she was oh, really goodness. funny and very delightful and I went to yeah. leave, and and you know, gave her, we hug, and I gave her a hug, a little kiss on the cheek, you know, bye. She said, "This is not the way we do it." <laughs> and kissed me right in the mouth, <laughs> and I, I loved Aww. it. And I uh, love that. That's so sweet. Uh, she, she was was a very very sweet lady. Now you had an experience uh, with Lee Greenwood. Uh, you was in Nashville at the Grand Ole Opry, and I believe, Helping Heroes. Tell me a little bit about uh, that event of Helping Heroes and and rubbing elbows with Lee Greenwood. Oh my goodness! Yes, I uh, I got invited to uh, to go step on stage and and sing a sing God Bless the USA with Lee Greenwood and I didn't I didn't stand in the circle I wasn't anywhere near it I stayed away from that because that is sacred and and hopefully that'll be my circle one day but um, that was such an amazing opportunity to be a part of that because they um, for people who don't know what it is Lee Greenwood is is I mean he's notorious um, for helping you know, our wounded, our wounded soldiers and people that, you know, have fought for our country and, and blessing them and, and raising money to help, you know, build them new houses and stuff. And that's, that's, that was incredible. I'd never been a part of an event um, like that. And I hope that I get to do it again, because that, that is something special and, and seeing all those, those guys and uh, guys and gals up there on that stage and, and missing, you know, arms and legs and, and all kinds of stuff and just as happy as they can be. And they just, they, they did what they needed to do and served our country, and and we are so you know forever grateful for them. So that was a really cool um, experience to to get to be there and and partake in that. So I absolutely loved it. It was an honor. Well, that was great. How, how did it feel for your first time stepping on that stage at the Grand Ole Opry? Oh my gosh, it was it was one of those moments that I have dreamed about since I was a little girl. Um, that's that's but that's the stage that my grandparents and I I feel like we have we've worked really hard to be on, and uh, and I I got the opportunity to just stand up there and and sing that song and 
I uh, I felt right at home. Like I thought I was going to be really, really, really nervous because I was very nervous up until that point. And then when I got on stage, I was like, okay, like this is it. This is awesome. Um, and I, I just felt like it was home. So I loved it. Now, on, on that stage, uh, I can't see you really being nervous because – you're singing, uh, I don't know if this is after the fact, the national anthem out in the middle of the field with all these crowds of people during a ball game. And that didn't make you nervous? <laughs> oh, no, that definitely makes me nervous. The national anthem is the one song that it doesn't matter if there's 30,000 people, you know, in a stadium or if there's 10 people um, at an event, I'm still going to be the most nervous of my life um, singing that song. That song is special and and you definitely, definitely don't want to mess it up. Um, if you do, you will never hear the end of it, apparently. And so it's it's definitely a song that I try really, really, really hard not to mess up. I have messed it up one time, though, but luckily I got to re-record it. It wasn't, you know, live on TV. So, um, but that was several years ago and I've made sure to not mess it up since. So, knock on wood, we're going to keep that, keep that going. So, <laughs> Keep keep that going because I have seen some stars that has messed it up, uh, and that's and people understand that. Uh, to me, I can't concentrate too much. I concentrate on everything else, looking around and stuff. I would lose uh -huh. my place, lose my train of thought. I would oh, yeah. I would butcher it. So unless I'm oh, yeah. looking directly at it. Yeah, there's now, a lot of there's a lot of pressure and a lot of weight on your shoulders when you're singing that song. So you definitely got to have it all together. <laughs> if you hear some dings and dongs, I've got clocks all through here that uh, that well, go off. Like <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, now you're wearing that beautiful hat, and tell me a little about how you became named the ambassador for the American Hat Company. Yes, so I actually I have been a huge American Hat fan for several years now um i would I, you know i always buy, buy american hats um and luckily my husband and i we actually wear the same size so we get to share uh, a lot <laughs> of our hats but i've been holding out because i I've, i have a couple of sponsors for you know some jewelry and some clothes and and uh, I've been holding out on a hat sponsor because I was determined that I wanted my American hat because I'm I'm just so particular and um, the best hat store in you know Fort Worth Stockyards is where I go to get my hat shaped and they sell American hats there and it just so happened that there was a guy there that could make things happen and he met with um, a member of my label and they got to talking and and she told him all about me and uh, then they you know, got in touch with the right people. And now I'm a, an ambassador for American Hat Company. So I'm, I'm very honored to wear their hats and, and I, I always wear them. So <laughs> I absolutely love them. So well, th th that is, I think it's, it's great because that's what country is. You know, you got the cowboy hats, you got things like that. And when you get the American Hat Company, it says American. You know, yes. and and, yes. and that's what it's all about, and that that that's great. Um, now, you have a a song out uh, that's going wild. Uh, Some girls don't cry, and yes. uh, tell me a little bit. How did you now? Did you write the song itself? Because I know some artists write, some have artist writers for them, or you collaborate with someone. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how, did, how did you come up with this particular song and, and, and music? Yeah. Um, so I wrote um, a few songs on my album that just came out um, a couple weeks ago. Um, but this one I didn't write. I didn't write Some Girls Don't Cry. I wish that I would have and probably could have from, you know, different experiences in my life. But uh, Lynn Snow, the owner of Get Joe Records, actually wrote this song. And whenever he met me a couple of years ago, um, he was like, I've got a song I think you should hear that I think you're going to like. And uh, sure enough, I heard it and I was like, oh my gosh, we got to take that song. We got to put it on the album. Um, and then it turned into being the actual title of the whole album. So um, the song is very special and uh, it's so much fun. I've even had you know, it talks about heartbreak, you know, a, a guy breaks your heart and you're just not going to, you know, you just don't care. You're going to go out and have a good time and not cry over him. And I even had a married woman write me on Instagram and she said, I'm happily married, but I'm screaming this song at the top of my lungs. So I just thought that was so <laughs> cute that, you know, someone is, is happily married and they're just going to scream this song like they just had their heart broke too. So um, I think there's something for everybody in that song and it's going so, so good right now. I know we're sitting at 
number three on the Texas charts, and yes. it actually got retired. Um, it was number one four weeks in a row on CDX True Indie. Um, so the song has just been, it's been doing killer. It's It's been doing so good. I'm so proud of it, and uh, I can't see where it goes after this. So, Well, I think it's going to continue to go up because it's it, yeah. your, your music, I've, I've listened to uh, quite a few of them, uh, here this past week or so and, and listening and, and you just got the, the old school soul country music as a young yes. young artist you. and uh i know one of your songs uh uh don't run out on me yep. is a good song and it, it, it kind of it's kind of uh, almost like some girls don't cry it's, it's it kind of almost like they went together somehow or another <laughs> yes yes so, yeah so, so, I, I can see that let's uh I'm going, to, I'm going to play just a little bit for the audience out there to uh, just just to hear a little bit what okay. what some girls yeah. don't cry what we what we're talking about if they hadn't heard it. Yeah. You heard me, you thought you got me good. Now, they heard a snippet out, now they can go buy it. <laughs> yeah, go buy it. Go listen to it. Stream it all over. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Uh, that, that's a good song. It kind of, it, it, it's got a great catchy beat to it and tune to it. I, I think you could even line dance to that. <laughs> oh, yeah. They definitely line dance to it. <laughs> now, you, yes, sir. You, you go all over Texas. You go to Pennsylvania, Nebraska. You've had... Uh, Play at Farmersville, Texas, uh, Lexington, Te uh, Kentucky. Uh -huh. you, you you stay just busy, busy all the time. Yes, you got all the time. <laughs> yeah, you, and uh, do um, do you drive it sometime, or you, do you have you have a band that goes with you, or uh, you have your music? I mean, sometimes I know studios provide a, a band. Uh, that gives you some practice time with them before the concert. Uh, just for the audience to know, and, and because we've we got a lot of young people here in the little small town of Union, South Carolina, from where I'm from, that uh, uh -huh. we have some good artists here, but sometimes they need more directions, especially on, for young people like yourself, to, where they can say, well, I don't have to be stuck in one little place just playing just a little bit here. That they can branch out. Uh, yeah. Uh, was you nervous when you first branched out uh, from um, away from your like your community there? Uh, not really. Uh, yes and no. Um, I just I knew that if I wanted, you know, to to get bigger and and do better, do bigger and better things than what I was doing, I, I had to. You can't just continue to play the same areas. Um, number one, you're gonna overstay your welcome um, because someone else is going to come in there and that's going to be a new fresh face and they're going to kind of kick you out of your spot type thing. It's, it's just, that's how life works. Um, but I definitely, I was a little nervous branching out, but I've, I've been doing this for quite a while and I've done my own booking um, for several years now. And it's one of those things that you just, you have to do. Um, and you can't go play one place, you know, down the road for free and then want to turn around and go play another place 30 minutes down the road and, and want to try to get $10, you know, a person, you know, to come see you. Cause the whole goal is, is to put butts in seats and to sell tickets. And, um, you gotta, you gotta know when to say no to some of the, the free stuff and, and have people, you know, really want to come see you and, and want to come see your shows. And, um, that was, uh, you definitely got to branch out though. You, you got to get out of the, the same little places that you play or the, you know, the same town or, or, you know, stop, playing there for a little bit go play somewhere else you know a couple hours down the road and then come back you know once every couple months to the the place that you were at that's that's what i did that's what i still do sometimes so um yeah i think it's i was nervous but it's something that has to be done if you want to grow um as an artist and continue to play more shows and 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 learn from it so that, that was one thing that i did and that, that's good advice because, like I said, we are a small town, yeah. small venues. We have, you know, little fairs here and little festivals that come up this yeah. way that you sing in, and which, is, which is good to get your local exposure. And, you know, if you're local exposed, people are going to find you, and they're going to say, can you come over here and sing this? Can you come and do this right here? Yeah, and, and you exactly. Got, and you got to branch out uh, to it. Uh, I see you got um, 
I think September 27th, you're uh, going to, is it Whiskey Fish at the Grand? Yeah, so they're actually, that's actually where I live. I live in Grand Saline, Texas. Um, so I'm playing, we do a salt festival. It's called, because, you know, salt, you know, the salt so, that you eat uh -huh. um, is from Grand Saline. So that's where you get your salt from is the salt mine here in Grand Saline. That's what we're known for. And so they do a salt fest every year. And this is the 50th anniversary um, for the salt festival. And uh, my band is going to be playing. And then a friend of mine, um, they used to be called Whiskey Fish. And they were pretty big back probably about 10 years ago. They uh -huh. were touring with Randy Rogers and Wade Bone and all kinds of people, and um, they they quit and, and kind of broke up, and they're doing a reunion tour or a reunion show that night. So it'll be a big it'll be a big night because everyone you know they're they're locally from here, um, and so it'll be a it'll be a really good night. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, because I, I seen the whiskey fish, and I was thinking I ain't never heard of whiskey fish, Texas, and <laughs> <laughs> so so yeah, where yeah. where do you live at? It uh, is that's where all our salt comes from, right? It sure is. Yeah. And it sure is. I used to, uh, uh, short uh, lived in a place called Saltville, Virginia. And they had, which was closed down, salt mines back through there. Uh -huh. But I didn't know that, so I learned something new. And yep. Uh, yep. and then you're going to be going up to uh, Hokatown, Oklahoma. Uh, I am. That's going to be so fun. Um, I love, it's It's actually, it's Hochtown, Oklahoma, but it's like Broken Bow. Like most people know where Broken Bow is. It's like right next to Broken Bow, Oklahoma. Um, and we've got a full band show up there. And uh, that'll be that'll be a lot of fun. I'm excited for that. Yeah, I was just uh, scrolling over your all your uh, itineraries here. I was, wow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've got a lot more to add. I'm actually behind on. <laughs> like, I'm updating my schedule. I need to get that done tomorrow. I've got a lot of shows to add. So. Well, I know that you. Uh, uh, just by looking looking here. How do you travel most? Do you, do you drive all this uh, driving? Or are you a uh, uh, bus or fly? No, I don't have a bus. I wish. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm driving everywhere. Or um, if it's if it's a long distance trip, you know, my band went from Texas to Louisiana to Wisconsin to Nebraska and back, and so we rented a Sprinter van um, for that trip. But I think the next goal is I really want to get my own Sprinter van because I've got the trailer, but I need to get my own Sprinter van. Um, you know, to make it a little bit more comfortable for everyone to travel. But most of the time, if we're playing in Texas, everyone kind of drives themselves. So we kind of just all meet, you know, meet there. The band will all meet wherever we're playing in Texas. So it's not too crazy just yet, but I feel like we need to, we got to be looking at a Sprinter van pretty soon. So, <laughs> yeah, that way you can all go, go to good, go together. And, uh, and, and yes. Now, do you write your, uh, I asked you this earlier, but I think we'll just talk about that particular song. Uh, but uh, you, music that you write, do you write your own music, some of it? or? Yes, I do. There's a, there's three songs on the album that I wrote. Um, and then my next album that we're actually recording, we're starting to record now to release next year. Um, there's going to be a lot more songs on there that I wrote so, or that I co-wrote with people. So. Um, definitely love to write my own, but I'm definitely open to other people. You know, if they have something they think would fit, I uh, I, I definitely love to listen to what other people have as well. Now, do you uh, when when you write these songs? How do you get the inspiration? I mean, does it just you when you wake up, or you hear something in the middle of the night, or you're driving? How do you kind of put this together? This is for people that uh, loves to write music and things, uh, write poetry or write things uh how do you get your inspiration or, or how the, how do you get your songs like that um i mean most of my songs have been you know from from life experiences and, and things that i've been through um or they're things that i've heard other people talk about or you know witnessed other people do or, or how they've lived um and a lot of mine honestly is when i'm driving down the road i'll I'll think of something and, you know, write it down or I'll think of like a melody and I'll put it in my voice memo and go back to it later if, you know, I can use it for a co-write because I, I do a lot, of, a lot of co-writing here in Texas, but also fly to Nashville um, and do a lot of writing in Nashville as well. Um, so it really just kind of depends on, on um, the mood that I'm in and, and the day that I'm having and if something comes up and if not, then I've got a whole list of things in my phone of 
songs that I've started and they're just sitting there. You know, I've got like a verse and a chorus or I have a couple lines that I can go back to later on. So uh, I kind of all over the place sometimes, but sometimes I can write a song in like 20 minutes and and then it's good to go. So, <laughs> but that's not all the time. So I wish it was. Now, do you, do you when you write your song, you put your, do you put the lyrics of the music to it, uh, how you want it to go? Do you, I mean, because I had a, uh, it might've been Richard or uh, Sturban, uh, uh, Monty Allen. Monty Allen, he, was, he plays for the Allen Jackson Band. And he uh-huh. writes some music. He says, when people write music, uh, he said, told me that if they just write it and not putting the music to it, he says, they're just doing poetry. He said, when they write it and put the tunes to it, they're writing music. I can see, I can see that. I'm definitely a... Like, I can't just write a song with just just words. Like, I have to have a melody or something or a guitar or something in my hand to kind of help, you know, help me write it. Like, I can't just sit down and start talking words and, and not have anything to go with it. I, I agree with that. So I'm definitely the same way when it comes to that. Yeah, and you just talk about driving sometimes and just writing things down. Uh, uh-huh. you, you know where the song, the guy that the, the, person that wrote the Elvira for the Oak Ridge Boys, you know, you know how it, it really came about. Uh, Richard Sturban told me this, that the guy that wrote it come to a stop sign and looked up and there's a, there was a road said Elvira. And it kind of clicked. Oh, he, wow. said, he said, I'm going to write this down. And he went down the road and had all kind of potholes and everything. And that's where they got the um, bop, a mile, mile is he got that <laughs> from that right there. And then he added the rest of oh, it. Oh, that is crazy. I, I, that was crazy. I, it, it was. And, and I thought, well, I never knew that. So I'm glad I got to talk to him to for him to tell me that little bit about it. Now I want to hear it. Yeah. I'll think about that road. <laughs> think about that road with the potholes. Oh, my gosh. Now, that, is, that is something. Now, you you got a song out there also, Gunpowder and Lead. Oh, that's not my song. That's not your song? That, that's a, I mean, I've... No, I covered it like at a on a video, probably like, if you're on YouTube or something. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's where actually, I heard it. That's Miranda's song. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's Miranda's song. Well, yeah, I just I just covered it. That's a that's a Miranda Lambert song. But yeah, that's one of my favorites when I you know go play or play a show. I, I still play that song at my shows too. Well, I, I was wondering because I said hey, I've heard that before <laughs> on it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Well, maybe. I wish it was mine. I uh, wish it was mine. I'd be I'd be getting a lot of mailbox money right now, but it's not mine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I tell you what, you uh, you <laughs> you suck it excellent. <laughs> well, thank you. She she she, 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 you. she ought to, she ought to be proud of you. Uh, yes. Maybe she'll hear it one day. Uh, hey, I bet she will, <laughs> because she hears. Uh, I'm I'm sure she listens to other music and. Uh, yeah. And playing and play cover songs, I, I know when I use songs in some of my uh, intros and things, I really have to watch out how I use it because, you know, copyrights, and even though I use yeah. a few seconds of it. And I usually ask permission for them to, to use it where I won't get dinged or knocked off or anything mm-hmm. like that. It's, it's nothing worse than having a uh, a show and someone <laughs> knocks you off of it. <laughs> yes, for sure. Now, uh, you said... Uh, your husband you have a husband uh-huh. and uh yeah. uh any children yet oh yeah i i have four kids so oh. they're uh they are they are something special but i've got a really great support system um uh, my husband's actually in the oil field and my um my best friend is my babysitter and she has watched my kiddos for um 9 years now um and so she lives with me full time and and she's definitely my ride or die. I couldn't, I couldn't go and, and do this singing thing and, and play all these shows and chase this dream without her. So I've got a really great support system behind me that allows me to go and do that. So. Well, I'll tell you what, you really fooled me. I, I, <laughs> I, I, was, I was thinking. Well, I, uh, I look really young. Yeah, you do. Great. I'm hoping that it'll just stay like this forever, but I'm, I know it won't. But <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, well, you're about 20 or 18, 20. And, uh, Oh my goodness gracious! Yes, I wish. I, <laughs> I wish. Yeah, no, oh my goodness! What do you, awesome. what do you children, children say about mommy performing? And, and, and do they get excited? Do they get to come and, and hear you sometimes? 
They sometimes they do. Um, we uh, oh my gosh, we took them all to a show one time, and I, I say one time because we never did that again because um, <laughs> they were they were they were too crazy. They were too much for me. Um, so, but my daughter is uh, she is she actually um, started high school this year, and so she gets to go with she'll go with me quite a bit um, to some shows, and she loves to run merch for me and. Um, she used to love to sing when she was younger, but now she doesn't. So, (laughs) but, but yeah, my, my kiddos love it. They love that, you know, their mom is, is, uh, chasing her dreams and not letting anything get in the way. And that's what I, that's what I wanted to show them, you know, the whole time is, is to follow your dreams, no matter how big or small they are and not ever let anybody tell you that you can't do it. So that's, that's what I wanted to hear there because that's inspiration to some, some local people here that's, uh, it's, it's yeah. in the music. They, they probably they don't branch out or something like that. And kudos to your husband yeah. for being so f- supportive for you also. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. he and really is. He's, Texas he's and, one of my biggest supporters as well as my grandparents. So they're, yeah. they're all, uh, I've got a great support system behind me. That's what it takes too, doesn't it? Take that great support yeah. system. Now, earlier this year, didn't you have a single right now kind of girl? I sure did. Let's make sure I that sure went to did. cover. I it knew that one, George. Ever number one. Uh, yes. Yeah. It was my first ever number one song in Texas. Um, and so it was number one in Texas. It was number one a couple weeks in a row on CDX True Indie. Um, and it did, it did so good, did so good on all the charts. And, and then we came out with, you know, some girls don't cry right after it and it's still out right now and, and climbing the charts and doing crazy good. So, um, both of those songs have done, done so, so good. I'm so proud of both of them. So, but yeah, right now kind of girl is, is one of my favorite songs because it's definitely about me. I didn't write it, but I could have because I'm definitely a right now kind of girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, who, who wrote the song for you? Uh, uh, can you tell that or? Uh, Lynn Snow actually wrote that one. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the one that also wrote Some Girls Don't Cry. So, uh, well, Lynn Snow and Ryan Brashear, um, he's out of Nashville. They both wrote Right Now Kind of Girl. Um, so, yeah, great well, song. And, and to me, I, I, this, I'm, I'm really starting to learn a lot about the, the way that the writers and uh, uh, musicians and, and singers co- collaborate together to make a great song, uh-huh. uh, yeah. it, it's uh, it, it's amazing to me because I'm thinking all artists write their own songs. That's that, <laughs> that's what they usually yeah. think, and and and, it, and you can have writer's block for many years if you <laughs> if you don't watch it. Uh, yes, I can yeah. imagine that you've had some of those moments that you wrote a few lyric lyrics and get to that point to where, oh, I'm blocked. Have you ever had that to happen? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Literally three days ago, I have a, uh, I have a great, uh, I have a great song that I started. Um, I've got a verse and a chorus and that's it. That's all I've got still. <laughs> um, and I, I keep trying to pick it back up and I even went one night thinking about it so much. I didn't sleep because I'm trying to lay there and go to sleep. And I'm thinking about this dang song song that I can't finish and I know it's going to be so good but I'm stuck um so it's probably going to be one of those that I, I take to my label or a couple of my co-writer friends that I'll call up and see if they want to hop on it with me because I it's it's a great song but I just I'm stuck <laughs> well that's good that you have help like that to, to help you get yeah. a, get in yeah, stuck for sure and it, you, you probably have had songs that the ones that you've written here it's been so great that when you write them if you get stuck like that, all of a sudden, just anything triggers. You could be in a grocery store or you'll be somewhere or another that your mind clicks on it. Uh, that's why I've had some artists yeah. to tell me that, that they just, one was yes. getting, he said, vegetables in the grocery store <laughs> when it clicked. Uh-huh. So. Yeah, I agree. I agree. What, uh, we, we got ne- your next, what are some of the, uh, what are some, some of the places that people can hear and buy your music? Yeah, so um, anyone can go to my website, billyjoejones.com. It's B-I-L-L-I-E-J-O jones.com. Um, you can find links to my Facebook, my Instagram, my TikTok, um, Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, all that good stuff. And you can go find my music on there. Um, we didn't do CDs for my album that just came out, but we did do uh, 300 limited edition signed vinyls um that we have for sale on my website so you can find those as well i think there's 
probably about a hundred left on there. So if y'all want one of those, go grab them. Um, I'm definitely a vinyl girl, so I'm glad we got to do a few vinyls. Um, but uh, but yeah, y'all can go check out pretty much whatever you want to know is on my website. So billyjoejones.com. Um, come see a live show sometime. I play full band and acoustic shows all over the place and uh, would love to see everyone at a show sometime. So, Well, I, I'm glad you're doing vinyl. I love vinyl. Uh, my son has got a, oh, I do too. He's got a mu- I do too. M- music room that's probably 16 by 16, thousands and thousands of albums. He's been collecting them since he oh, was, wow. uh, he's 50 uh, years old, and he's been collecting them ever since he's probably six years old or more. Oh, that is awesome. And he, he loves music. You ask him anything, he can tell you the artist or whatever thing about him. I mean, he, he, he's, he's great at that. Uh, I love the vinyls on it. Uh, I know CDs are now kind of, you know, just like most things, they, they kind of fade out to other things where now mm-hmm. you, you can download streaming music. And, yes. And that that's okay, too. But um, some of the vehicles still, yeah, I've still got old ones, got the CD player. <laughs> so... Uh, oh, so, so, so they can go to your website and, and get all the information uh, about, yes. uh, mm-hmm. you got a Facebook page. Yep. Facebook, and, Instagram, TikTok, and it's all ran by me. So if you see, you know, a post or a comment or anything, it's me. And I, I try to, I literally you can go on there and look, I try to write back every single person that I can. Um, it gets a little overwhelming sometimes, so I can't, I can't, you know, respond to everybody, but I try really hard to sometimes. So. Well, I will uh, when when I air this and and upload, it, we'll uh, I'll send you a link to where it's yes, uh, where please. It's I'll be post at. it on my page. We've got you. yeah. We've, we've got uh, it goes on like three different uh, Facebook pages uh, at one time: YouTube, Kick, Twitch. Uh, I got like eight to ten pages it goes to, plus uh, Spotify oh. and Amazon Music and Apple Music and iHeartRadio podcast, and so. I try to get all of it out there for people to see whether they be driving, want to listen to it in the car, or they want yeah. to uh, uh, to watch it live even. So yeah. it, this is for recording. That is awesome. So sometimes doing live, uh, <laughs> you it, it seems like everything works perfect sometimes, and then all of a sudden you get a glitch. Uh, and and, and yeah. live, you, you can't correct too much. So I learned a, a valuable lesson of recording why I stream live. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's good. That's a good thing to do. Well, Billy Joe, I thank you so much for coming on. Uh, yes, to thank you for music. having me. I appreciate it, it. It was great meeting you, and you, and you just kind of nice to meet you. you. Just kind of blew me away with with your kids and marriage. I thought I had twenty years old and and, and going wide open. Uh, but oh man, you just, I wish you we just, can, we can just keep it that way. Just pretend like I'm twenty. There you go. <laughs> Well, you keep up your great work. Uh, you, you got, Thank you. You've got the country soul there. Uh, you just picking up with the uh, Loretta Lynn and uh, Dolly Parton and and Patsy Cline yeah. and all them that 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 had uh, all of the great great old school music. You're bringing that back, and and I know I appreciate it because uh, when I was starting here to hear this, I said, wow, yeah. when your agent sent me your your name and stuff, I started searching and looking and listening. And I says, wow, yes. that's, I, this music just brings back some, some old days. So, Well, good. That's my goal. That's uh, that's definitely what I intend to do, and I'm, I'm going to keep on doing it. So I appreciate you. Well, thank you so much for coming on, and I'll sign off here in yes, a sir. second here. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. You've been watching Billy Joe Jones, and we'll be putting a link on there where you can go right to her website where you can search everything else about her, look at her songs, hear the songs, and where to find them at. Well, I'm Jerry McKee, and you have a great, great day.